Good morning, good morning. Come on in, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Amen, good morning. Come on in. Amen, bless you, bless you. Amen, it's going to drop a word in your ear and just going to encourage you real briefly. And we're going to pray, we're going to, we're going to go before God. Amen, amen, bless you, bless you. Amen. We're going we're gonna to go before God. But I'm just going to drop a quick word in your hearing. And we are going to touch and agree uh, to God concerning concerning what it is that you are believing God for in this day, in this time. We are going to uh, touch and agree for this world. Not just this country, but this world. Because we know that the world is becoming more evil and evil. But as we know, the Bible speaks of such in the last days it would be so. Uh, at the same time, we know also that, that glo his glory would arise too. His wisdom, his knowledge, the knowledge of his glory, he's going to pour it up onto the earth as well. And the people of God, the gospel, will be preached throughout the world as well in the midst of all that is evil. See, because God is greater than evil. Love is greater than hate. It don't matter how bad it is, God is still in control. He is in control because the, the word has already been done. The word has spoken of this that's going to happen. And the Bible did say that the devil, he is a defeated foe. Which means that you shouldn't be afraid or become alarmed by what you're hearing in the news and what you're hearing on the radio and whatnot. Because God is your keeper. As long as you stay in the ship, everything will be all right. Amen. Because the Bible says that his right, right hand and his holy arm has gotten him. The victory. The victory is mine. We are ready to overcome us. And so all we got to do is just go through the process. This just a rewind. Because it's already been done. It's already been said. The book has already been sealed. Based on the word. And so what we're doing. We're going back. And we're going back through it again. That's all we're doing. We're going through it again. And uh, give me about. Give me about maybe. Give me about 21 seconds. Then I'm going to go ahead and get started. Briefly, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. It's going to come from Isaiah, the 62nd chapter and the 6th and 7th verse. And then I'm going to ex explain to you and express to you what it is that I'm sensing and what it is that God is doing. And what it is that God is going to do right now in this time and in this season. Amen. 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 Give me about five more seconds. Five more seconds. Five more seconds. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and get started. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is a new day and its mercies are renewed every morning. I thank God for waking me up and I thank God for being the Lord and God of my life, for being my keeper, for being my way maker. I thank God for my spiritual father, Apostle Melvin L. Mosley. Amen. I thank God for my kids. And most of all, I thank God for my lovely and pregnant wife. Keep her in your prayers. Keep her in your prayers. She ready. I'm ready. Uh, and so uh, so we're waiting. We're waiting in expectancy uh, for the good news to come. The good news going to come. But the good news going to come through pain, <laughs> Not other than, you know, labor. Uh, but we're excited. And she's saying that she's excited. And I'm glad, too. I'm glad. And I just thank God in my my 49-year-old body, mine, well, not body, I'm probably got a young guy, I probably got about 20-some-year-old body, but I'm just excited about being blessed and to be able to have a child at this time in my life. I never thought, never thought in a million years that this day would come, but it's like the moment of truth, and I'm thankful that God has given me the grace and the mercy to be able to, uh, to be able to have a child, to have another seed in the earth. But I want to, where you're hearing, uh, 
the verse in um, Isaiah, the 62nd chapter in the 6th and the 7th verse, it says, it reads as follows. I have set watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give and, and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And the thing that I've since try to be brief, the, the thing that I've sensed and the thing that I've known for a fact that is taking place. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The thing that I notice uh, right now and what's happening and what I feel, I feel a a, a sound. I feel a, 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 a an intensity. It's like the calm before a storm. It's like something is getting ready to happen. It's like in a place where it's like it, I feel like a, we're in a place where it's between time. It's between yesterday and it's between tomorrow. In, in a certain place, that's what I feel. And what is getting ready to happen, there's getting ready to become a a, 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 a outburst. I feel like there's getting ready to come something that's going to happen, that God is going to reveal his power and his glory in a great way. God's going to show his glory. And I feel that. I feel that like and unto, if I could use the day of Pentecost, when the Bible says that when they were all assembled in this one room, and we don't know how long they were in this one particular room, but at some point in time, the Bible says that they had all things in common. And once they had all things in common, then there came a sound, a rushing of a mighty wind. And the Bible says that his train filled the temple. And what I hear and what I feel, I feel a praise. I feel a praise that's going up. I feel a praise that's going up because when they became together, what that said, that said a that that said to God that God we become unified. And we become a praise. And as I was reading, the Bible says that God has set a watchman upon the wall who watch day and night and keep talking to the people and keep talking to the people until God's people become a praise in the earth, an offering, uh, a release, uh, a giving thanks. And see, God comes where praise is. See, because the Bible says that uh, praise is a lion's baby. In other words, in other words, praise belong to God. Praise is God's baby. And see, and see, when 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 God's baby cry, the Bible says that God will come and rescue, and and stand and move where that cry is. And the very thing that I hear all over the world is a cry. I hear a cry in the bedrooms. I hear a cry. I hear a cry on the jobs and in the streets. In the grocery store, in the homes, in the bedrooms, and in the field, I hear a cry. And what I'm hearing from different leaders and different preachers and different prophets and different evangelists and teachers, I'm hearing a sound. There is a sound that's going up. Kind of remind me of, kind of remind me of, of, of the walls of Jericho. When Joshua, God instructed Joshua to tell the people to go around the walls six times. And in those six times, be quiet, but go around praying, be praying, but quiet, praying. But on that seventh time, on that seventh day, go around that wall seven times. And on that, uh, and on that seventh time, begin to shout and begin to shabbat. And see, this is what I'm hearing from God. I'm hearing the people of God reaching up and shabbatting God. In other words, they're giving God a, a praise. Even though, they're in, in, even though they're in pain, even though they're in warfare, and even though they are facing so many things in their life, but yet and still they are following instructions. They are following the instructions of the Lord. And because of the obedience, there is, there is God's going to release a sound. And from that sound of praise, God's glory is going to come down and rest in the people's life. I believe that. I believe and I feel that there's a coming a revival. I, I feel that there's coming a, in, in gathering. I feel that there's coming a outpouring. I feel that there's coming a win. And I feel what's happening. And see, and I feel that what's happening, there's coming a turning. There's coming a shift in the hearts of men. From the fathers to the children. And the children to the fathers. From the disobedient to the obedient. From the mother to the daughter. From the drunkard. From the prostitute. 
from, from those that have been rejected, from those in, in, bed, in, in the sickness and in the hospital who are sick. I feel that there's a turning. And I feel that that release is getting ready to take place. And what I hear in my spirit, God is commanding us. And I come here today. God is commanding us to praise him, to praise him because your power and your victory is in your praise. Because regardless of what you're feeling and what, regardless of what you're dealing with, when you praise God, when you begin to keep praising God continuously in you praising God, God is going to come in your situation and lay down. And when God come in your situation and lay down, he's going to rest and his rest is going to release his power. I believe, I believe in this day and I believe in this day in time that God is going to remove and God is going to move like never before. I, I believe that God is ready to unstop deaf ears. And I believe that God is going to open up blinded eyes. There are many people eyes are blind. They are blind to the truth. They are blind to holiness. And they are blind to um, who God is. But what I believe, I believe that God is getting ready to peel away and peel away the eyes of God's people, of God's people also, but also the people that are in the world. And I believe that people who are, have run away from God, those backsliders, I believe that they're hearing the sound of God, just like the prodigal son. And at the low place, they're going to remember God. They're going to remember the, the father's house. They're going to remember the pit house. And they're going to turn. There's coming a turning. There's coming a turning. And so I believe that the church must prepare herself to be ready. We must be prepared to be ready. That's why we must watch as well as pray to fortify ourselves and strengthen ourselves that we might be ready when they come. Because they're going to come from every walk of life. They're going to come with baggage. They're going to come stinking. They're going to come with all kinds of habits and situations and in their life. They're going to come with game and all of that. But they're going to come. Some going to come out of their grave, their proverbial grave of sicknesses and diseases. And see, because they're hearing... It's like, it's like what Jesus did when, when, when Lazarus was at his tomb, when he had been dead for four days and Jesus called him by his name and he said, come. And he was bound, but he still came. He was bound, but he still came. And that's what I feel that there's a command that God is bringing and God is calling. They're coming out. They're coming out of their tombs. They're coming out with their grave clothes on. They're coming out with problems and hurts and all that. And so we must be ready. And we must be ready and we, we must be prepared. And in us being prepared, we must be obedient. We must be obedient. And in that obedience, we must obey and submit ourselves and we must cast our garments. We must cast, give everything to God. If, if you have problems with anybody, your brother or sister, God is saying, get it right. Get it right. It, even in the homes of marriage, marital homes. If you and your spouse is having some problems and situations, go, go to, go get counsel. Come together. Get it right. Get it right because there's a flood that's getting ready to take place. There's a flood. But also what I feel and what I hear, there's a release of wealth. There's a release of prosperity. Uh, physically, in, in, in body, in our body, of far as healing, but also in prosperity and money. I believe that there's a flow. And I believe that there's a rhythm that's taking place in, and coming in harmony. I feel, I feel that there's a harmony that's taking place. I believe that there's a sound that's taking place and people are coming together like never before. Amen. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because God is releasing. God is releasing. And God wants us to give him a Shabbat. God wants us to praise us. Praise him. Because he's going to come in our situation. And whatever you need, if you need healing, he's going to become that healing. If you if you need joy, he's going to become that joy. Because God is releasing his manna. And one of the definitions of manna is what is this? Manna is what is this? What is this? Miracle. What is this? In other words, God is going to become the very thing that you need in that hour. And there's going to, God is going to answer even some of you. Some of some, some things that you haven't even uttered out of your voice, out of your mouth. God is going to answer you according to the measure and according to the, see, because God know even the, 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 the things even in your heart that you ask for, that you even ask. And God is going to even request and answer that. And some of you, and some of you, it's like with, it's like with, um, who was that? Um, Daniel, when he had prayed, that God's people might be released. And he didn't give a selfish prayer. But it was an unselfish prayer. And it took 21 days. For that answer to come. And see David. Uh, Daniel thought it was something wrong with him. But it wasn't nothing wrong with him. But he stripped himself. And went into sackcloth and ashes. Many of you have been blaming yourself. Many of you have been beating yourself up. 
Because you've been waiting, but your answer hadn't come. But you think you've done something wrong. You think you've said something wrong. And so you've been examining yourself, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But you didn't do nothing wrong. And see what happened. There's been a warfare over your head. There's been a warfare, and, and the, the adversary has been holding up your blessing. But I hear and I feel that your blessing has been released. Just like that angel that came to Daniel after 21 days with his answer, he said that your answer was released when, 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 you, spoke for, when you first prayed. I uh, see, but the prince of Persia had, had intercepted your blessing, but I had to, I had to send help. I had to send one of my war angels to come and release your blessing. And I come to tell you that God has sent a war angel to release your blessing that is on his way. And so what God wants you to do right now, as that blessing is on his way, is begin to give thanks. It's to begin to shabak him. It's to be, begin to appreciate him because to praise him, that means God, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for who you are. I appreciate you who you are and what you have done. And for the fact that you're just God and that you're in my life and you're sovereign in my life. And so God wants you to give thanks in all things. Begin to give thanks. And that is my message for this morning is give him thanks in all things. Praise him. Praise him. Don't look at your circumstance. Don't look at your condition. Don't look at none of that. But look to Jesus. Don't look at your storm. Don't look at your circumstance. Just like with Peter. When Jesus was walking the water, and when Jesus was walking the water and they were afraid, but Jesus is I. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter, uh, Peter said, If it be you, Lord, bid me to come. And as long as Peter listened to the command of the word to come, Peter was walking the water. But he took when he took his eyes off of that word and put his eyes on the circumstance, then he began to sink. But then he reached down, then he called out, and he cried out to God and God, and Jesus brought him up out of that water. But, but keep your eyes on the word. All you need is a word. What you're dealing with, what you're facing. It might be difficult. It might be unbearable. You cry late at night all the time. And you, you, people don't understand. You feel like nobody understands, but God understands. You feel like you've been forsaken, but God said that I'd have not forsaken you. But see, but see, God said cry out to him. Cry out to him. And all you need is a word. That's all you need. For your situation, many of you have been dealing with something for 20 years. It's been painful and it's been bad and you're tired of going around that same old mountain. You're tired, you're tired, you're sick and tired. And you said in your spirit, enough is enough. All you need is a word. And that one word will snatch you away. It will take you out. It will bring you through. And God will take you over the top before he'll let you go under. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. We magnify you for you being God. For you being God in our life. And God, we invite you into this prayer room. God, come in and sweep. God, send your chariot of fire. God, come sweep and illuminate everything and burn away anything that's not like you. That's here in our heart. Around us. Those voices, God, we rebuke those voices. We put those voices on at flight. It has to leave our dwelling. In the name of Jesus, God. God, let us touch, let us hold hands in the spirit, hand on hand. And God, let us look at each other, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because the Bible said, you said that when we, when we, when we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And God, raise us up. God, make us a sound. God, make us a praise. And in you making us a praise, God, and when you make us a praise, God, you will rest and you will become a covenant with us. And you cannot divorce us. And you will not divorce us based on your word. And you, your word is true. Let every man be a liar, but let what you say be, be true. And God, we stand in proxy. God, for those families that are hurt and bereaved. God, we stand in, in proxy for the broken heart. God, we stand in, in proxy for the, 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 the minds that have been shattered and confused. And God, we speak to them. God, we arrest their mind. God, we arrest their heart. And God, we, we speak that they come in right now. God, we speak to their mind and their spirit. Because you said your sheep know your voice And a stranger they won't follow And God we speak out of the authority of your voice And with the power that you've given us As a united front God And God our sound will become as a scud missile And it will hit the target And it will hit that very thing That it, it, it has been designed to hit And God we pray and we speak that we hit the target In the hearts of those that are lost God that they might be found That their heart might be pricked that they might fall on their knees and realize and understand 
That the answer is not in a bottle. That the answer is not in a relationship. That the answer is not in money. That the answer is not in a feeling. But the answer is in you. For you said in the word, God, tell the rich man to glory not in his riches. Tell the mighty man to glory not in his might. But to glory in the fact that they know me. For I am the Lord. That they know you, God. And the, and the, and the fellowship of his suffering. And the power of your resurrection, God. God, draw us in, God. Draw us near and we'll run after you, God. God, bring us in and teach us, God. Lead us and guide us, God, down the pathway of truth, God. God, for thine word is truth, God. God, let truth build up in us, God. Give us your substance, God. And let us reveal and show your imprint. Let your mark be in our life, God. Let our light shine even in dark places, God. That every dark thing that is around us be become evicted. And that we shine. That we shine even when we don't feel like shining. That we shine even when we feel down. That our light might draw them in, God. God, God, because, because you said if you be lifted up, you'll draw all men to yourself, God. With loving kindness have you drawn us. God, let us show that same loving kindness to our friends, even our enemies. Let us pray for our enemies. Let us pray for them, God. And let us pray, pray for them that despitefully use us. Let us pray for them, God. And we will be so careful to give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. And God, for those that have an unspoken prayer request, God, meet, the, meet their prayer, meet their request, meet their petition, God. Those that hadn't said nothing, those that hadn't spoken nothing, those that feel so shame, shameful not to even speak because they, they feel that they done messed up so bad that they, they feel like they're not worthy. But yes, we are not worthy, but we're worthy with you, God, because you gave us the avenue, you gave us the blueprint, you gave us, you extended your gift. And you said, whosoever shall call on your name shall be saved and be delivered. And God, we, we, we're standing. God, we rebuke shame. God, we rebuke pride. God, we rebuke the unforgiving heart because you're angry at the unrepented heart every day. God, we rebuke it right now. God, we, the hearted heart, God, we go in their heart and take that stony heart out and give them a heart of flesh. God, bring them in, God. This is our duty and this is our calling and this is our plan. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. Y'all have a good morning. Amen. Y'all have a good morning and thank you for uh, your your um, your um, support. And again, keep my 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 wife in your prayers again, because it can be any day and we're excited. We're excited. She's going through severe pain. She's going through severe discomfort, but we know what's getting ready to happen. Many of you are going through much, much, much pain and much dis discomfort. But I come to tell you that something is getting ready to happen. So get ready and be encouraged. Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Don't throw in the towel. Don't walk away. Don't give up on God because God will not give up on you because somebody hurt you. So what? Jesus was hurt. Somebody betrayed you. So what? Jesus was betrayed. Somebody backstabbed you. So what? Jesus was backstabbed because the Bible says that in the end, he said, God, for, forgive them all for they know not what they do. And his purpose was fulfilled and he went down, but he got up with all power and he's given us that same power. And he said, as he was in the world, so are we. And so get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready for an outpouring. Open up your mouth, forgive yourself, forgive your neighbors, forgive your friends, forgive your family. And it's time to rumble. It's time to rumble. It's time to go forth. It's time to pursue. It's time to take back. What the adversary, what the thief has taken for us <clears throat> because he's taken many things. He's taken many homes. He's taking, he's taking your joy. He's taking your love, but it's time to take it back. It's time to pick up your, that mighty, that, the mighty man of valor. It's time to pick your sword back up, David, and it's time to fight again. It's time to quit you like men and fight. Put down your excuses. It's time to put down your excuses and it's time to fight. Amen. It's time to fight. Because God is moving by his spirit. For this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a good morning. Amen.